In the eyes of ordinary people, this is just an ordinary stone. But upon closer observation, it can be seen that this stone can reveal a dazzling sun through the cloudy sky. He is a legend in Nordic history. On the battlefields of the Eastern Baltic Sea in the Middle Ages, Ragnar Lothbrok is cleaning the battlefield. This is a land that believes in the King of Gods, Odin. Here, there is a group of Vikings who are skilled in navigation and brave in battle. They are naturally fierce and warlike, burning, killing, and plundering everywhere, so they are called Nordic pirates. From the 8th to the 11th century AD, it was the most famous Viking age in European history, and Ragnar Lothbrok was the famous Viking leader. Ragnar lived in a Viking tribe in Denmark. He had a happy and harmonious family. Ragnar's wife was beautiful, and they had two obedient and sensible children. At this time, he was just an ordinary farmer and warrior, but he had his own land. But Ragnar didn't want to live this peaceful life, because the blood of battle flowed in his veins. The next day was a public meeting held by tribal leaders. Ragnar wanted to take his 12-year-old son to participate, but his wife thought their son was still too young. However, Ragnar didn't think so. He thinks that a man should let him go out and see more of the outside world. Helplessly, Lager the could only agree. On the way, Bjorn asked what the public meeting was about. Ragnar told him that the council mainly dealt with some criminal matters and discussed the summer raids. The Vikings lived in a place with scarce farmland and long winters, so their resources were extremely limited. They had to rely on plundering surrounding countries to survive. Since the ships for sailing were owned by leaders, it was the Lord's decision where to raid. According to past practice, the Count will definitely send them to Russia in the east. But Ragnar wanted to go to unknown and mysterious and wealthy lands, the west. Finally, the father and son arrived at the coastal town where the leader was located. Here, Ragnar met his brother. In the tavern, Ragnar told Rollo about his plan. He told Rollo that he was going to the west. Rollo told him they couldn't sail in the open ocean. But Ragnar said he had a way to go to the west. I believe there's a way to go west. And then he took out a package. Using this, it needs to sit in water. Rollo questioned if without the sun, it would lose its effect. So Ragnar took out a stone and took Rollo outside. Through this stone they can clearly see the dazzling sun behind the dark clouds. The council was held as scheduled, and Count Haraldson finally appeared amidst cheers from the crowd. In the Vikings tribe, Earl Haraldson represented the law and had the power of life and death. This council is to punish two prisoners, one thief and one murderer. As punishment for stealing, Olaf Anwend would be pelted by people on the gravel road. And Eric Tryggvason will have his head cut off directly for murder. Bjorn expressed his doubts as he looked at Tryggvason. He wants to die well, without fear, to atone for his sins. Then the Count ordered his men to take Tryggvason's head to feed the pigs, and cursed his soul never to enter Valhalla, not to follow the gods. This is the most malicious curse in Viking culture, as they believe that souls will enter Valhalla after death. So for Vikings, this is the most vicious curse. At this point, Rollo said that this was because the Count wanted to take possession of that piece of land, and Tryggvason was the most qualified person to get that land. At the end of the punishment, the Earl of Haraldson will put arm bands on boys who have reached the age of 12. This symbolizes their loyalty to the Lord and is the main reason why Vikings are so united. After the coming-of-age ceremony, Ragnar asked Earl Haraldson at an inappropriate time where they will raid this summer. The Lord said they will raid the eastern lands again and enter Russia. Ragnar said they go to the same place every year, and there is nothing worth looting there anymore. Choice, yes. I've heard of these rumors, these stories, that if we travel west, that we will somehow reach a land that is rich and plentiful. But I tell you that I will not risk my ships on my reputation, on such a deluded fantasy. They're my ships, I pay for them, and they go where I tell them to go. Now that's the end of the matter. Ragnar stopped talking. Later, the Lord found Ragnar alone and warned him that he was just a farmer and should be content with the land he got. You insulted me out there, and not for the first time. But believe me, it will be the last. The Lord noticed Ragnar's dissatisfied look and knew he wouldn't give up easily, so he had his men keep an eye on him. As expected, after the council ended, Ragnar took his son to the deep mountains and found Floki. Floki is exceptionally talented and obsessed with shipbuilding. He can determine which part of a tree is suitable for shipbuilding just by looking at its trunk. 
However, due to strict control over private shipbuilding by the Lord, he has not been able to build a single ship, but Ragnar believes in him and uses all his savings to help Floki fulfill his dream. Of course, this is also for Ragnar to fulfill his dream of going to the Western world. Soon after, the boat Floki built was finally completed. Ragnar is extremely excited to see such a great work, but Floki is uneasy. Set the sail. Floki! The sail! She'll sink. No, she bloody won't. I shouldn't have pretended to build such a boat. It's beyond my humble capabilities. I'll set the sail. I'm sorry, Ragnar. I've wasted all your money. It was all a joke. Shut up, man. When they set sail with the ship, Floki can no longer suppress his inner excitement. Beautiful. Why didn't you believe me? I told you I could do it. However, they are unaware that the Lord's men are quietly watching them from the shore. While Ragnar was not at home, two gangsters broke into his house and planned to do evil to Lagertha. But Lagertha didn't panic, she asked Gaida to leave first. If you're thirsty, I will give you a drink. If you're hungry, I will feed you. Otherwise, you must go. We will eat and drink after we've satisfied our other needs. Lagertha then turned and picked up the stove iron in the fireplace. What they don't know is that they have provoked an extraordinary woman. Before getting married, Lagertha was a Viking warrior, and in the future, she will become a woman who will make the whole of Europe tremble. In the evening, Ragnar and Bjorn finally return home, and Rollo also comes to their house. During dinner, Rollo talks to Gaida about Lagertha's past heroic deeds. Your mother was a famous shield maiden. Was? Is a famous shield maiden and his eyes are always on Lagertha. After dinner, Rollo and Ragnar discuss their plans to raid the West. Now that they have ships, they lack crew members. In a tribe like the Vikings, where loyalty is paramount, not many people would go against their lord's wishes and choose to go on an adventure with them. There may even be some who will go to the lords to inform and betray them. But Ragnar is not worried at all. It seems that he has already figured out a solution in his heart. Just after he left the house, Rollo walked into Lagertha. Today I was with a girl from the town. Thank you. Good looking girl too. Didn't see her face. So yours. Don't talk like that. Why not? I think about you all the time. That's too bad. Don't insult me, shield maiden. No. I would never insult you. You're too great a warrior, but perhaps not so great a man. On the other hand, the Lord's men told the Lord about Ragnar's brother's plan to go out to sea privately. Unexpectedly, the Lord did not take action, but chose to wait and see. During the conversation, the Lord noticed that he had been staring at his wife. Then he stood up and said to his subordinates that if his wife wanted to be with him, he would arrange everything. When he returned home, he found a woman lying on the bed. And this person was the Countess. He thought this was the Lord's reward for him, so he quickly climbed into bed. <laughs> Me. I'm an Earl's wife. Take him. Yes, Lord. And the Count would do this just because he wanted to know whether he was loyal to him. At the same time, with Eric's help, Ragnar secretly gathered many young men to join their team. They swore an oath with arm rings, vowing not to reveal their plan to go west to outsiders. At the same time, Ragnar promised everyone to share the loot equally. Everyone joined his expedition, and they decided to set off in a few weeks. However, Lagertha was very displeased with this. This may be the most exciting voyage of their lives. Lagsha wanted to go with her husband, but Ragnar refused. He told Lagertha that this voyage was very dangerous, and they didn't know what would happen. Everything was unknown. He would never let his wife take risks with him, especially since they had two children at home who needed care. If something happened to them, their children would have no one to take care of them. At night, Lagertha picked up her shield and challenged Ragnar. Am I not good enough for you? <laughs> Did you remember? I saved your life. Fortunately, Bjorn pulled them apart in time to stop them from fighting. She knew Ragnar wouldn't let her sail with him, so Lagertha had to give up. A few weeks later, everyone was ready to go and set off into the unknown western world. Thus, the Viking Age, which lasted for 300 years, officially began.
The pirates set sail with a few crows on their long journey because crows can save the lives of the entire crew at critical moments. If the birds do not return, there is land. Just a few days ago, Ragnar gathered more than 20 young men to prepare for a robbery in the West. In that era, no one knew if there were any kingdoms in the West, but there were rumors that it was a beautiful place full of gold. For this dream, Ragnar took the risk and set off towards the unknown Western world. Of course, Ragnar was also prepared. At noon, he placed a sundial in the water. The shadow is shortest at noon. The sundial determines the direction of navigation based on the length of the shadow. If the shadow is exactly on the first circle, it means they are heading west. Otherwise, they have to adjust the direction of the ship. But at night, there was a fierce storm at sea with thunder and lightning. They had to lower the sails and continue rowing with oars. That night, they endured the baptism of the storm in huge waves. However, the Viking warriors were not at all afraid in the face of these hardships. It's my boat! And the gods love my boat! Why should I... Fuck me! Fuck me! Remember, you can't swim! The storm finally ended the next day. But a thick fog covered the entire sea, making it difficult to see. The sundial and sunstone were rendered useless. The crew began to lose hope and blamed Ragnar. One of the crew members angrily said they were deceived by Ragnar, and there were no countries in the west. They were on the road to death. We have been persuaded by madmen and fools. The god Loki is behind this voyage. That scoundrel. That sly one. Trouble and suffering are meat and drink for him. Ragnar would never allow this pessimistic mood to spread. He went straight to the man and stabbed him in the throat. Now, they could only rely on the crows. They released the crows, and if they couldn't find a place to rest on the sea, they would fly back on their own. If they found land, they would never fly back. They used this characteristic to determine if there was land nearby. Several hours passed, and Ragnar prayed that the crows would not come back. But the next second, they heard the sound of birds in the sky. Come back. There's no land. In their despair, the crew felt that something was wrong. It was the sound of seagulls. They looked up and saw seagulls soaring in the sky. Seagulls usually inhabit the rocky beaches of the coast and islands, which meant that there must be land nearby. On the other side, the monks on the shore saw the pirate ship approaching and hurriedly ran back to the monastery to report. This is England's Northumbria territory. At that time, monasteries were built on the coast and in some town centers without any defensive measures. After receiving the news, the priest immediately ordered the gates to be closed, but it was already too late. The Vikings were sharpening their blades on the coast. Before leaving, Ragnar instructed everyone to only rob and not kill. However, when they broke into the monastery, the monks were in a panic. The priest was still devoutly praying. Rollo brutally killed the priest. And the other Vikings started a ruthless massacre. Because Ragnar had promised equality to everyone before, he couldn't stop them and could only take the kind-hearted people to search for money and treasures. They arrived at a house where treasures were generously displayed. They made fun of how the monks placed their treasures so confidently. Ragnar answered that maybe they thought God was protecting them. One man sarcastically pointed at Jesus, saying that he was already dead. Another man said that he died just like Odin. Suddenly, Ragnar heard a noise from behind the cabinet. When he pulled it out, it turned out to be a local monk who could speak the Viking language. Ragnar threatened him and asked why he could speak the Viking language. The monk's name was Athelstan, and he explained that they traveled around and preached the way of God. He had been to the land of the Vikings. Ragnar had no intention of killing him and kept him for possible use in the future. At this moment, Rollo burst in. He disregarded everyone's attempts to stop him and tried to kill the monk. Fortunately, Ragnar stopped him. We are all equals. Does it really mean that much to you, brother? But Rollo was very angry and destroyed the crucifix, mocking Athelstan's beliefs. Athelstan was taken away by the pirates along with a large amount of gold treasures. Everyone returned with a full load and set sail back. 
Ragnar asked Athelstan how large England was. Athelstan truthfully replied that the place they inhabited was just a small island within one of the four major kingdoms of England, and it was a monastery. Ragnar's eyes instantly filled with desire and ambition. A few days later, the group successfully returned home. The shore was crowded with people eagerly awaiting their triumphant return. At that moment, Earl sent men to take Ragnar away. He accused Ragnar of disobeying orders and venturing out to sea on his own. As punishment, he allowed each person to choose only one item from the treasure. It wasn't just because of Ragnar's greed, Earl wanted to assert his authority. He could sense that Ragnar was becoming a threat to his position in the hearts of the people. Everyone watched as Ragnar made his choice. Surprisingly, among all the treasures, Ragnar selected Athelstan to be his slave. Ragnar's decision sparked laughter from the crowd. On the surface, it seemed like a foolish choice. However, Ragnar knew that Athelstan's knowledge of the Western world could greatly facilitate his future expeditions. Moreover, by choosing Athelstan, he could minimize the threat to Earl. Ragnar brought Athelstan home and introduced him to his family. The children were curious about this foreigner. Lager the eagerly pulled her husband into a room, while Athelstan listened attentively from the neighboring room. He began to feel troubled and started reciting the Bible. Surprisingly, Ragnar extended an invitation to Athelstan. Wouldn't you like to? In the end, Athelstan didn't succumb to the temptation. However, it was actually a test from Ragnar. On the other side, Earl took advantage of the night and ordered his steward and slaves to bury the stolen treasure. The boy couldn't understand why they had to bury the gold and silver treasures. The steward truthfully told them that their gods promised that after death, their souls would enter Valhalla, where they could use the accumulated wealth. But the wealth needed guardians. You've already seen enough of this life, boy. After saying this, the steward killed the boy. The poor boy became the guardians of the treasure. Time passed, and Athelstan's hair grew out, which made him feel deeply remorseful. To protect his faith, Athelstan took a risk and stole a small knife to start shaving his head. Even as blood flowed, he did not give up. However, in reality, Ragnar's family did not treat him as a slave but provided him with a room. Athelstan's fear of Ragnar began to diminish gradually. During a drinking session, Athelstan truthfully told Ragnar about the situation in the western continent. He revealed that in the land of England, where he resided, there were four kingdoms. His own kingdom was Northumbria, ruled by a powerful king named El. Ragnar couldn't understand why their mighty kingdom would be plundered. Athelstan helplessly explained that they had never anticipated that someone would disrespect God and raid monasteries. Ragnar expressed his desire to learn Athelstan's language, and Athelstan agreed. The next day, Ragnar returned to Earl's house with the monk. He informed Earl that Athelstan had mentioned a town near his monastery, where other monasteries existed, and endless treasures could be found. It was at this moment that Athelstan realized he had been deceived by Ragnar. Ragnar wanted to raid his own kingdom once again. Ragnar hoped that Earl would return his ship, and in return, he would bring back all the plundered treasures for Earl. Earl believed he could do it himself, but Ragnar tempted him by suggesting that someone with more experience and a willingness to sacrifice should go instead. After considering it, Earl proposed a condition, his trusted man, Canute, must accompany them. Earl wanted to not only prevent Ragnar from secretly keeping the treasure but also learn Ragnar's navigation techniques so that he could kill Ragnar afterward. On the way back home, Athelstan felt heartbroken. Ragnar had deceived him, making him an accomplice in the plunder of his own people. Ragnar took out a dagger and cut off the monk's collar, setting him free. However, this was Viking territory and he had no chance of escape. Helplessly, he had no choice but to follow Ragnar. Upon their return, Ragnar agreed to let his wife accompany him. However, there would be no one to take care of the children. Ragnar pointed at Athelstan, and Bjorn reluctantly accepted. Lager the warned he sternly. If any harm befalls my children, I will tear the lungs out of your body. Priest. This was the second expedition of the Westward team. Just as everyone was preparing, Canute stared lustfully at Lagertha. Rollo noticed and angrily warned him that if he dared to have any improper thoughts about Lagertha, he would be killed instantly. With the experience from their first expedition, the group successfully landed on the western continent. However, due to the previous raid, the English had strengthened their defenses along the coastline. The two sides met in direct combat, but... <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
the English were no match for the mighty Vikings. However, one soldier managed to escape and reported the Viking landing to the king. This was the Vikings' second expedition to the west, and with the experience from the first one, they smoothly landed on the western continent. However, due to the previous raid, the English had strengthened their defenses along the coast. When the two sides met, direct combat ensued, but the English were no match for the mighty Vikings. Unnoticed by everyone, a soldier quietly escaped and reported the news to L. The proud Ragnar paid little attention to this matter. With his entourage of over 20 men, he prepared for plundering. Guided by their captive, they quickly found a coastal town. Ragnar was delighted at the thought of finding a great amount of gold and treasure ahead. Impatient, Rollo urged Ragnar to move quickly, but Ragnar seemed unfazed. Ragnar knew that many English people would be at church on Sundays, making it the perfect time for a surprise attack. The next day, when the church bells rang, Ragnar immediately ordered his small team to attack. At that moment, the residents and guards were all inside the church hall, leaving their weapons outside. The Vikings stormed into the church and swiftly dealt with the guards. Ragnar told the people that they were only after riches and wouldn't harm them as long as they didn't resist. Leading his men, they looted the valuable items in the hall. Meanwhile, Knut broke into a house and pinned a beautiful girl to a table. Lager the witnessed this and tried to stop him, but Knut pushed her aside. Lager the drew her dagger and stabbed him in the back. Enraged, Knut raised his axe and killed the girl beneath him. As he prepared to attack Lagertha, she stabbed him in the waist. With the looting complete, they gathered in the square to prepare for their return voyage when Ragnar noticed Knut was missing. Upon inquiry, Lagertha informed her husband about what had just happened. Ragnar knew things were not going well because Knut was Earl's trusted ally. To make matters worse, when they returned to the shore, they found a large army of Els troops waiting for them. Facing the overwhelming English forces, the Vikings showed no fear. They showed the English what a shield wall truly meant. Shield wall! The terrifying aspect of the Viking shield wall was that their circular shields formed an impenetrable barrier. The enemy army became crowded and unable to advance, while the Vikings could shoot arrows at them at any time, killing them off. When the enemy suffered heavy casualties, the Vikings opened up their shield wall and engaged in a frenzy of slaughter. <laughs> Witnessing the ferocity of the Viking warriors, the leader quickly fled on horseback. How could it happen, my lord Wigius? I, I have never in my life seen men fight as these Northmen fight. Believe me, there's something devilish in the way they look, in their lack of fear in the face of death. Who are they? We captured two of them who were guarding their boat. We couldn't understand anything they said at all, except one word. As a result, Ragnar. El learned Ragnar's name. After burying their fallen comrades, they returned to the harbor once again with a large amount of plunder. The people welcomed Ragnar, seeing him as a hero in their hearts. Earl observed all of this and felt that Ragnar was threatening his position. Noticing that Knut hadn't returned, he inquired about his whereabouts. Ragnar admitted to killing Knut, and Earl immediately ordered his arrest. To bring about Ragnar's downfall, Earl enlisted the help of Ragnar's brother, Rollo. He manipulated their relationship and promised to marry his only daughter to Rollo, ensuring his succession as Earl. Even his beautiful and voluptuous wife was used to tempt Rollo, with the aim of framing Ragnar for intentional murder. Under these temptations, Rollo began to waver. The next day, the trial assembly officially began with Earl and the people present. Earl accused Ragnar of committing crimes without reason, killing his trusted ally, and accused him of wanting to keep the treasure for himself. 
Just as everyone seemed to agree with Earl's claims, Lager the stepped forward and confessed to killing Canute, revealing his attempt to assault her. However, Earl dismissed her words by claiming that they were husband and wife, and he had eyewitnesses to support his version. When Rollo stepped forward, everyone was shocked. You say you are a witness to the death of Knut. Ragnar Lothbrok killed him. What Ragnar Lothbrok has sworn is true. Your half-brother was caught raping a Saxon woman, then he attempted to rape Ragnar's lawful wife, Lagatha, the shield maiden. Earl was dumbfounded as Rollo's testimony declared Ragnar innocent. At night, the expedition team celebrated with a party, and Lager the thanked Rollo. I didn't do it for him. I did it for you. Shield maiden. Rollo's words left Ragenhild stunned. When everyone was intoxicated, a large group of assassins stormed into the room, underestimating their strength. The small team defeated the assassins within minutes. By the time Earl discovered what happened, the assassins he sent were already dead bodies. At that moment, Ragnar was engaged in a fierce internal struggle, deciding whether to rebel or continue being manipulated. With the old man's scream, the massacre officially began. At Earl's command, soldiers mercilessly slaughtered the villagers, who could only flee for their lives. Earl coldly watched as he was willing to sacrifice an entire village to kill Ragnar. <laughs> Unaware of what was happening in the village, Ragnar was hunting in the mountains. Upon hearing the screams, Lager the immediately armed her son and daughter, instructing them to hide and protect themselves. She knew Ragnar would come to their rescue, and indeed, Ragnar turned his head and rushed back to the village upon hearing the screams. The village was engulfed in flames, and the slaughter continued. Ragnar charged down the mountain, demonstrating godlike strength. His thigh was deeply cut open but he fought with all his might and killed two people for the sake of his family. Just as he silently snuck back into the house, an arrow pierced through his body. Earl's men had already discovered him, but Ragnar endured the excruciating pain and snapped the arrow. Returning to the house, Ragnar lifted the wooden plank from the floor, allowing his family to escape to the boat for safety. To buy time for his family's escape, Ragnar chose to face Earl and his soldiers alone. Covered in blood and with his leg wound forcing him to kneel before Earl, Ragnar dropped his battle axe, signaling his surrender. Looking down on him, Earl asked if Ragnar pleaded guilty. Ragnar, while surrendering, glanced discreetly in the direction of his family's escape. After ensuring his family had escaped, Ragnar stood up and began to resist. He forcefully threw aside an enemy's battle axe and seized a horse in the chaos, making his escape. His family, hiding on the boat, watched their home engulfed in flames, feeling a mix of emotions. Meanwhile, three cavalrymen chased after Ragnar, but he persisted, dismounting and evading them on a hillside. A returning soldier near a small creek spotted him, but Ragnar, bloodied, managed to reach the mountaintop. Hopelessly, he realized there was a steep cliff just meters ahead. With the soldiers closing in behind him, Ragnar knew he had no way out. Closing his eyes, he leapt off the cliff, and the soldiers, too afraid to look, retreated. However, Ragnar's family happened to be nearby when he fell into the water. Athelson hurriedly jumped down to save Ragnar. Earl learned of Ragnar's leap into the sea and ordered his men to search for him. If they couldn't find the body, they were not to return. Severely wounded, Ragnar was taken to Floki's residence. Floki was Ragnar's most trusted and loyal friend. Having some knowledge of medicine, Floki performed surgery on Ragnar. He used a heated surgical knife to disinfect and cauterize Ragnar's wounds, employing unconventional methods to save his life. During his recovery, members of the expedition team visited Ragnar. He told Ragnar that the Count was spying on them and that he escaped from the surveillance and came here. Floki finished cooking and welcomed his brother, who was taken aback when he saw Floki's beautiful girlfriend. At night, Floki invited him to sleep together. If you don't come now, I promise you will regret it. Come on. In order to bring good luck, he married his only daughter to an old man. The old man had white beard and blackened teeth which angered Siggy and made her leave in frustration. She couldn't understand why, with their abundant wealth, Earl would marry his daughter to an old man. Earl explained to his wife that he had consulted a seer who predicted an impending revolt within the Viking. 
The leader of the rebellion was believed to be Ragnar, and the seer prophesied that Ragnar would crush Earl's bones and skull. That night, Earl was restless and fearful, as he had no idea where Ragnar was hiding. To ward off the ill omen, Earl decided to bring joy by marrying off his daughter. Although the groom was considerably older, he was at least an Earl. Siggy reluctantly agreed verbally, but deep down, she plotted ways to save her daughter. The wedding took place as scheduled, and Earl held a grand feast for Thyri. Rollo's sudden appearance gave Thyri a glimmer of hope. She looked at him with a mixture of longing and hope, wishing that he had come to claim her hand in marriage, so she wouldn't have to marry the old man. But Rollo didn't even glance at her, from the moment he entered, his eyes were fixed on Siggy. Earl noticed Rollo in the crowd and approached him to inquire about his purpose for being there. Rollo revealed that their fleet had been confiscated, and they were being monitored by Earl's men. Vikings were born to raid and fight, and being monitored was detrimental to both sides. Earl offered to let them continue their voyages if Rollo revealed Ragnar's whereabouts. Ragnar is dead. You swear that on your armory? No. Then why- I cannot swear because I have not seen a body. But I've heard nothing and he is my brother. I'm sure in my heart he is dead. Earl didn't fully trust his words, but to avoid disrupting his daughter's wedding, he pretended to believe him. However, he failed to notice the subtle flirtation between his wife and Rollo. To go to the matrimonial chamber. Shortly after, Earl announced the end of the wedding. Looking at the son-in-law who was older than himself, Siggy deeply resented Earl in her heart. After the wedding, Siggy secretly met with Rollo. After a brief intimacy, Siggy warned Rollo that Earl was cunning and would not spare him. Rollo didn't pay much attention, but as soon as he stepped out, he was captured by Earl's men. Earl subjected him to severe torture, but Rollo refused to disclose Ragnar's whereabouts. In the end, Earl used a small knife to leave scars on his face. Upon hearing the news of Rollo's capture, Ragnar knew that if things continued like this, Rollo would die sooner or later. Although he hadn't fully recovered from his own injuries, Ragnar couldn't leave his brother behind. After much contemplation, Ragnar finally came up with a bold plan. I have another favor to ask of you. I want you to ask for a meeting with the Earl. And when you meet him, challenge him to a personal combat with me. Following Ragnar's instructions, Floki conveyed his message to Earl. However, Earl wasn't a fool, he had many soldiers and could easily find and kill Ragnar. There was no need to risk a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. In the midst of their conversation, Earl suddenly remembered the words of the priest, that killing Ragnar would solve everything. Ragnar had been evading him all this time, and there seemed to be no other way. Earl decided to take advantage of Ragnar's injuries and kill him directly. And so, Earl accepted Ragnar's challenge. On the eve of their final battle, Earl spoke honestly to his wife. In Ragnar, he saw a reflection of his younger self, and he knew that Ragnar's views on the Western world were correct. But he couldn't support Ragnar's idea because it would mean that his own supporters would join Ragnar's side. The Seer promised you would kill him. In a fleeting moment, Siggy even wished that the person to die would be her own husband. On the day of the decisive battle, Ragnar limped his way to the harbor. Rollo was released, and Earl marked his face with shameful scars. Thyri and her 90-year-old husband also arrived at the scene. The battle officially began, and Earl's henchmen announced the rules. The weapons for the duel were primarily axes and swords, with each person allowed to use two shields. Once the second shield was damaged, they could no longer use shields. Earl immediately discarded one shield, and Ragnar, not wanting to take advantage, also threw his shield and launched the first attack. <laughs> Earl had the upper hand from the start. Seeing Ragnar discard his shield and sword, Earl did the same. The duel entered its final stage, with the axe as the ultimate weapon. Ragnar, dragging his injured leg, struggled to fend off Earl's attacks. In a moment of carelessness, Ragnar was struck by Earl. Though not deep, the blow reopened Ragnar's unhealed sword wound, forcing him to cover it and continue the fight. The elderly Earl gradually lost strength, and Ragnar struck his back with a final blow. Earl could no longer stand, and upon seeing their leader's death, Earl's followers panicked and called for Ragnar to be killed. 
but there was no reaction from the crowd. Rollo walked slowly towards Earl and, taking up an axe, killed him with a single strike. Taking advantage of the chaos, Siggy approached her daughter and took the knife, stabbing her son-in-law to death. Siggy surveyed the surroundings and knew that Ragnar was the people's choice. She supports Ragnar as the new Earl. Hail, oh Ragnar! Amidst the cheers of the masses, Ragnar finally ascended to the position of Earl, officially beginning a new chapter in the conquest of the Western world. Ragnar killed the tribal leader and ascended to the position of Earl. Despite Earl's greed and cunning, Ragnar decided to give him a proper burial, recognizing Earl as a brave Viking warrior. Ragnar planned to take Athelstan to experience Viking customs. He brought Athelstan to a tent, they saw two servants wiping a woman's body. Confused, Athelstan asked what was happening. She is one of the Earl's slaves. When he died, all of his slave women were asked who wants to die with him. This one agreed. Now an Earl. She wants to die? Meanwhile, the town was bustling with celebration as people rejoiced in the grand funeral. Athelstan ran into Bjorn and the two of them enjoyed tasting meat together. They saw the female slave, supported by the two women, knocking on the doors of the men's houses in the town. What are they doing? She is having sex with the men who live in there. Hearing this, Athelstan froze in place. By the coastline, a crowd had gathered, carrying Earl's body to the harbor. A priest was already waiting there, and Earl was placed on a small boat filled with firewood. The female slave was brought before the priest, visibly limping. The priest removed the newly worn jewelry from her and made her drink a cup of holy water. Even at that moment, the female slave still held onto the hope of continuing to serve her master in another world. Amidst the cheers of the crowd, the priest took out a dagger and slit the slave's throat. She was then placed on the boat to be buried alongside Earl. Athelstan couldn't bear to watch any longer. Siggy found Ragnar and expressed her desire to personally light the funeral pyre for Earl. Ragnar scoffed, as he would never entrust such an important task to a widow. Amidst the singing and dancing of the people, they set fire to the boat, sending them to Valhalla. After the funeral, Lager the told her husband that she was pregnant again. Overwhelmed with joy at the blessings of the gods, Ragnar wept. At this time, Siggy was preparing to flee with her daughter. She had a vague sense that her time was running out. After all, previous new earls had treated the family of the previous earl in this way. Just then, Rollo burst in. He told Siggy that he understood Ragnar's character and that he would never kill innocent family members out of revenge. He assured her that he would protect them for the rest of their lives. From Rollo's gaze, it was clear that he was not willing to submit to his brother's authority. The long winter was coming to an end, and Lajertha's belly was growing day by day. Ragnar was planning to set sail again and plunder the Western world. Previously, due to the constraints of the former Earl, he couldn't fully pursue his ambitions. Now that he was an Earl himself, he intended to expand his influence. Three Viking warships sailed towards the Kingdom of Northumbria, with Ragnar leading the way. This time, they didn't choose to land on shallow shores but directly sailed into the River Tyne in England, heading inland towards the kingdom. Upon hearing this news, the general who had escaped last time immediately reported it to King El. El was puzzled. Weren't these barbarians afraid of death? How dare they openly sail their ships into his kingdom? I fear death as much as the next man. But I have no fear that afterwards, God will raise me up again. Oh, well, well said. said. Yeah. Seeing the cowardly behavior of the general, the king took him to a pit filled with venomous snakes. No! Please. No. Now, let us prepare to defend ourselves against these heathens and barbarians. Ragnar led his fleet of three Viking ships into the heartland of the Kingdom of Northumbria, intending to plunder the capital city. King El urgently summoned the forces of England to defend against the invaders and recalled his brother to serve as the general. Brother! I'm a wolf! <laughs> Meanwhile, Ragnar and his Vikings began establishing a fortress along the riverbank. As this was a large-scale attack, they needed a stronghold and the opportunity to launch surprise attacks. Soon, Ethelwolf arrived with a large army at the Viking fortress. They encamped not far away, fortifying their defenses and waiting for the Vikings to attack. Ethelwolf's subordinates were puzzled by his actions. How dare you argue with me? Go do your job, set up camp. 
Ragnar, being cunning, didn't wait for Ethelwolf to finish fortifying his defenses. He launched a night raid on the enemy camp. They mercilessly attacked and slaughtered the English soldiers. Hearing the sounds of battle, Ethelwolf was abruptly awakened from his sleep. Quickly drawing his sword, to everyone's surprise, he knelt before the cross and began to pray. With no one to command them, the soldiers were quickly overwhelmed and slain. After finishing his prayer, Ethelwolf found himself trapped under a tent that Floki had cut the ropes of. The Vikings achieved a resounding victory in the battle, and Ethelwolf became their captive. While cleaning up the battlefield, Ragnar learned that Ethelwolf was King El's brother. He was wondering how to attack the capital city when he unexpectedly obtained a valuable bargaining chip. Ragnar was overjoyed. King El's palace was in chaos, and these several hundred soldiers had already depleted much of the king's treasury. The ministers advised the king to use treasure to bribe the Vikings and avoid a direct confrontation. My lord! Let me think on it just a little while. The next day, Ragnar, accompanied by Ethelwolf, arrived at the gates of the capital city. Upon seeing his brother still alive, the king decided to let them enter the city for negotiations. Ragnar, driven by his desire for wealth, agreed to the negotiations. Once inside the palace, the ministers saw them as demons and were too frightened to speak. To ease the tension, the king suggested negotiating over a meal. Before the people of the kingdom ate, they would pray to Jesus. The Vikings, however, ate in a wild manner, using their hands. Floki became fixated on the plates. <laughs> Shall we talk, King? The negotiations officially began, with Ragnar demanding 2,000 pounds of gold and silver. The ministers were furious upon hearing this demand, but after a moment of hesitation, the king agreed to Ragnar's terms. During the time it took for the king to gather the funds, the Vikings were to remain in their camp and refrain from harming the king's subjects or their property. There is one further condition. I desire that either you or one of your companions agrees to be baptized into our faith. Upon hearing this request, everyone burst into laughter. The Vikings had their own beliefs and would never abandon their gods. However, to everyone's surprise, Rollo agreed. The ceremony took place by the river, under Floki's angry gaze, as Rollo underwent baptism. As night fell, the king arranged rooms for everyone. Unbeknownst to the Vikings, the king was intentionally stalling for time. The next day, they patiently waited at the camp for the ransom payment. Floki harbored deep animosity towards Rollo for betraying their gods. Just as they were about to take action, King El's men brought several large chests. Ragnar eagerly sent someone to open them, only to find that the chests were empty. Ragnar realized that the king was buying time and gathering forces. Before long, a large number of English soldiers charged towards them. Fearless, the Vikings raised their shields and prepared for battle. As the English soldiers approached, Ragnar swiftly triggered a preset trap. The Vikings charged towards them, mercilessly slaughtering the inexperienced recruits. <laughs> Witnessing the fierceness of the Vikings, the English soldiers discarded their armor and fled. The battle was over. Amidst the mud, Rollo searched for surviving enemies, determined to exterminate these Christians. Ragnar, filled with anger, used blood to draw a cross on Ethelwolf's head, then sent his body back to the capital city on a horse. This humiliating act finally made King El realize the gravity of the situation. The two battles had nearly wiped out all his troops. Now he had no choice but to comply and send 2,000 pounds of gold and silver to Ragnar. Ragnar returned triumphant once again and set sail back home, leaving the resentful king swearing on the shore. As the new earl, Ragnar embarked on his first western expedition, returning with countless treasures of gold and silver. However, he couldn't find happiness upon his return. He learned that Lager that had suffered a miscarriage during his absence. 
Ragnar was consumed by guilt and self-blame. He believed that all this misfortune was his doing, as they used to offer sacrifices to the gods every nine years. This year happened to be the ninth year, and due to his eagerness for the western expedition, he missed the time for the sacrifice. Ragnar believed he had angered the gods, leading them to cruelly take away his unborn child. Ragnar wanted to make amends at the temple and proposed taking Athelstan with him. After some hesitation, Athelstan agreed to his request. In the two years he had spent in the Viking community, he had gradually assimilated into the society. Once everything was arranged, Ragnar, his family, and loyal followers set off for the temple. They lined up to receive the blessings of the high priest, and Lager the hope to conceive again. It was Athelstan's first time witnessing the Viking's belief in the gods, and he couldn't help but show a look of reverence. After the prayers concluded, Athelstan saw chickens, oxen, and sheep outside the temple, each in groups of nine. Curiously, Athelstan approached an empty enclosure, unable to understand why it was empty. It's for the humans that have been chosen. It turned out that the sacrifices included nine human lives as well. Athelstan was stunned, frozen in place. A prominent figure arrived at the prayer ceremony. It was King Horik of the Vikings. The king praised Ragnar as a hero of the Vikings, the first to defeat an English king. Ragnar also pledged his loyalty to King Horik and requested the king to send several assault teams to support them. To pique the king's interest, Ragnar mentioned that there were wealthier kingdoms in the west than England and asked Athelstan to confirm his words. King Horik was delighted and expressed his willingness to send troops to Ragnar's aid. However, he proposed a condition, there was an unruly earl who refused to obey his rule. If you can help me reclaim this island, I will send troops to support you, Ragnar agreed. Meanwhile, Siggy found Rollo and began to sow discord between the two brothers. Ragnar was in a meeting with King Horik, not only did he not ask you to go, he also took all the credit. Rollo felt uneasy about this and further deepened the misunderstandings between the two brothers. Before the ceremony began, a high priest asked Athelstan if he was a Christian. Athelstan calmly replied, that he was not. You have been brought here as a sacrifice to the gods. In a moment of blankness, Athelstan's hand instinctively reached for the cross, a gesture seen by the high priest. Athelstan narrowly escaped punishment, but it meant that someone else had to step forward to fill the void. Floki wants to fill the void, but his girlfriend stops him. Just then, a warrior stepped forward. This warrior had been Ragnar's comrade from the beginning. For the sake of family, friends, and his own people, he chose to step up. The sacrifice officially began, and under everyone's gaze, the sacrificial priest killed all the prepared living beings. Their blood was poured into the blood pit beneath the god's tomb allowing the gods to feel their devotion. The bodies of the 72 different species were hung in the forest, nourishing the flora and fauna. On King Horik's orders, Ragnar arrived at the territory of Earl Borg on the island of Gotland, accompanied by six others. Upon meeting Borg, Ragnar stated that he was sent by King Horik for negotiations. However, Borg showed no regard for King Horik and declared that there was nothing to discuss. If he had the courage, he should send troops directly. When Ragnar revealed his identity, Borg's attitude immediately changed. He had heard of Ragnar's exploits and greatly admired courageous individuals in his life. Thus, he arranged a feast to entertain them. During the meal, Borg and Ragnar discussed the island, highlighting its vastness and abundant minerals and wealth. To avoid unnecessary conflict, Borg proposed two solutions. The first was for the king to acknowledge that the land belonged to him, and he would lease it to the king. The second was for the land to belong to neither side, and for both parties to develop it together. Ragnar found the second option appealing and decided to send someone to discuss it with King Horik. Ragnar sent Floki to deliver a message to the king, and Borg suggested a scenic spot on the island. There was a giant eucalyptus tree there, worth visiting. However, to prevent any deceit, one person must remain behind as a hostage. Ragnar contemplated and decided to leave his brother Rollo behind, deepening Rollo's resentment towards Ragnar. On their journey, Ragnar encountered a beautiful woman who caught his eye. During their conversation, he learned that her name was a slog, the daughter of a former king, and her mother was a legendary shield maiden. Since the death of her parents, a slog had been living in seclusion on the island. A slog greatly admired Ragnar, and when Ragnar proposed a trip to the eucalyptus tree, she happily agreed. Meanwhile, Rollo, held captive as a hostage, fell victim to Borg's manipulation. Your brother is a great man. As am I. I'm sure you are. And yet I've never heard of you. 
After days of traveling, they finally arrived at the eucalyptus tree. Their constant companionship during this time led to a rapid deepening of their feelings for each other. One night, a slog took the initiative to join Ragnar in bed, awakening Bjorn with their actions. The next morning, Bjorn found his father and warned him that if it happened again, he would tell his mother. Ragnar promised not to let it happen again, and from then on, no matter how hard a slog seduces Ragnar, he remains loyal. Meanwhile, Lagertha had her hands full as she helped Ragnar manage the affairs of the tribe. Unfortunately, a severe plague spread throughout the tribe, infecting numerous common people. Lagertha's daughter also fell victim to the disease and eventually passed away. Filled with grief, Lagertha bravely lit a funeral pyre for her daughter. A few days later, a slog informed Ragnar that she was pregnant with his child. Ragnar found himself torn and unsure of what to do. When Ragnar and his group returned to Earl Borg's residence, Floki delivered the king's message. What compromises is he willing to make? What did he say? He will make no compromises. Borg presented Ragnar with two options, leave the next day or join him in opposing the king. Ragnar was deep in thought, and Borg approached Rollo privately, asking him which side he would choose if they went to war. If you eliminate your brother, your name will be known far and wide. Rollo was torn between his own flesh and blood and the desire for personal fame and glory. Meanwhile, Ragnar was making a difficult and painful decision. He picked up a dagger, preparing to kill someone. However, when he opened the door, it wasn't Rollo and Borg on the other side, but a slog. A slog knew that Ragnar wanted to get rid of her and return to his family. As Ragnar placed his hand on a slog's belly, he couldn't bring himself to do it. For the sake of their child, he decided to bring her back to the tribe. I say yes. I will fight with you against my brother.